Hi there everyone, um, welcome to week four. So this is week four of the Managing Children with Cerebral Palsy course. I'm Rachel Lowe from Physiopedia and today I'm talking to week four facilitator Lucia Bernark. Hi Lucia. Hello Rachel, hello everyone. So Lucia is in the Democratic Republic of Congo, so we're absolutely delighted to have this internet connection working this morning. So what we're going to do is just have a little bit of a chat about week four, and I'm I'm not going to interject too much because there's a slight delay. But Lucia, um, week four is all about communication and feeding, so maybe you could perhaps just tell everybody a little bit about yourself and where you work, and then we'll talk a little bit about communication and feeding for week four. Yes. So I am Lucia Bernard. I am working actually with the ICRC in the Democratic Republic of Congo with uh, war injured. I have been working with the children with cerebral palsy, uh, though in uh, Ecuador, in, uh, in Sudan, in, uh, in Iraq. Um, but um, from the time being, I mean, I'm not uh, in this mission involved with the rehabilitation children. And so you've had quite a lot of experience of working with children with cerebral palsy. Um, with what are, so tell us a little bit about what are the main things that physiotherapists or and other healthcare professionals should think about when we're sort of learning or trying to develop our knowledge on the communication and aspect side of feeding, uh, uh, sorry, the communication and feeding side of cerebral palsy and what we should be thinking about. Maybe you want to talk about those two things separately or maybe they're the same, I, I'm not sure. Yes, so uh, communication and feeding are really two uh, very, very multidisciplinary topics. Uh, they are involving not only the therapists, but their parents and everyone surrounding the, the child, actually. Communication and feeding is something that we don't choose to do or not to do. It's something that we have to do. It's happening. We cannot choose not to feed our child. We cannot choose not to communicate with our child. So. I think that it's really important to think about uh, actively uh, every time that we are doing um, feeding or we are with the child on how we do it. So it's all about thinking, how could I do this a little bit uh, in a different way? How can I adjust it to the child that I have in front of? How can I do it differently? How can I do it better? It's about uh, in uh, enhancing quality of life of children with cerebral palsy and uh, in communication and in feeding, there are a lot of aspects that we can improve, um, especially feeding. Feeding can have um, uh, bad consequences on children, can have uncomfortable um, uh, things, uh, consequences. So uh, we want to try to avoid and we want to try to make feeding and more enjoyable for the child and communication as well. So when people are reading the resources this week and doing the learning activities through on this course this week, what are the what are the pieces of knowledge are sort of that are really important that people should try and highlight in their reading this week? Yes, yeah, so about communication, I think that a very important message is that communication is not speaking. Communication is uh, everything that I transmit to the child, every behavior that I have with the child, every gesture, every um, every look, every uh, everything that I uh, that, that I do when I'm in front of the child. So this is uh, this is the main uh, the main uh, meaning of communication. So we will we will see what communication is. We will see how communication develops in children um, and different types of communication we will see how we can adjust this to the child and especially I think it is very important to understand that it's not only about how we communicate with the child but what do I understand uh, from the child that is in front of me do I know my child do I know when he wants to say something to me when he's angry when he's sad when he's happy so it's really a bilateral um, issue concept, uh, communication uh, it's very important to remember this in in feeding. Uh, it's it's um I, I it's important to highlight that it's a it's a it's a complex procedure. Uh, but we want to we want to make things uh, easy in this course. So we want to uh, learn uh, basic 
um, basic methods on improve a little bit uh, the, the, the feeding and nutrition of, of our children. So to, um, to try to avoid the bad consequences that feeding can have on our child. Perfect. I think, yeah, that's really interesting to hear you talk about that um, from a from a new perspective, which I have. So um, some really nice messages for people to take into week four. And um, we're also going to cut, just start thinking about the child as they move into adulthood. Have you got a few short comments on that as well? Yes. So this is this is a topic uh, with which we are com we are uh, we are in front of every day. I think parents are asking us, will what will my child be able to do? Um, so we have to think about the future. We have to pay attention on not drawing um, uh, already um, an image of what the child will be able to do because nobody knows exactly. But we have to really evaluate it and consider it. We have to be able to give suggestions to parents um, and especially positive uh, inputs. It's very important to look as in, uh, in the future of ch uh, children with cerebral palsy in a positive way. Of course, we know that there are some, they will have some difficulties, but there are also solutions for the difficulties that we have. So the message here is really, um, is really look at the solutions that we can find. Everything can have a solution. And children with cerebral palsy, they can have a good quality of life if, uh, if we are uh, there to help them. Okay, I think it's nice that we're starting to think about that this sort of in midway through the course. So we're midway now. Um, it's nice to start thinking about that, especially as we move on through the next few weeks when we're talking quite a lot about more functional aspects of um, sort of daily activities and, and vocation and things. So nice to start thinking about that now. Are there any, before we um, finish up here today, are there any more sort of comments that you have to give to participants on the course um, at this stage? Yeah, so uh, um, of course we remember at this stage already what uh, what we what we learned until now because it's really about integrating a very small piece of information going on. So it's important to remember what we did until now to collect new information. Take uh, you don't have to take take everything, take take important things, um, and uh, enjoy as much as possible. Great. Um, Lucia, it's been absolutely fabulous to talk to you today. I'm pleased that we've managed to be able to do this um, interview, um, this little chat. So thank you so much for joining us yes. today. And we look forward to seeing you in the forums this week. Me too. Okay. Thanks a lot, Rachel. Okay. And enjoy the course, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.